Welcome to episode 34 of Kimpin. I'm Michael. I'm Tiffany and uh, happy spring. It is now officially a spring season. Today is a beautiful day and we are filming in and around the Palais de Congrès in Montreal. Um, basically where all the major conventions and conferences happen, right? The car show's here. Well, that's pretty big. A lot of fun. <laughs> all right, so let's move on to Fit News. So what's going on in Fit News this week? Well, I came across a really neat little website or blog. It's called uh, squatfox.com. And the author of the, of the blog actually uh, made a free printable workout log for people to download. Ah. Yeah, it's a free PDF file. I mean, uh, I, I actually downloaded it, checked it out myself. Uh, it, it lets a person easily plan and track a weekly and daily workouts. Mm -hmm. uh, they can monitor their fitness goals. Uh, they can also keep tab on uh, weight fluctuations, their heart rate, their energy levels pre and post uh, physical activity uh, exercise. And they also can uh, mark down the type of exercise that they did. And uh, they could even mark down some post-workout notes, whether they were uh, tired or they felt pain or uh, different feelings they might have felt uh, during and after the exercise. Hmm. So that's pretty good. You just print that out, put it on your fridge, mark it down every time you finish your exercise, keep track. Yeah, it's good for beginners, it's good for motivation, it's good to, a good way to start off. Yep, visual cues. Visual cues. Very right. good. like that. Try that. Yeah. So, on my end, um, I'm sure you guys all remember the Children's Fitness Tax Credit. I'm sure hopefully all of you are taking advantage of it this year. Um, what I think is trying to get started is the adult fitness tax credit which would work the, sim, uh, the same way basically um, but it hasn't come into effect yet and we are trying to garner more support for it so that it could actually happen um, so we'll uh, give you the link afterwards for you guys to check it out and uh, this could have potentially a lot of benefits for us in the future and if we can get this started sooner the better um, who doesn't want a tax credit <laughs> you know I mean a lot of adults are going to the gym or taking part in uh, sports teams um, and if this is going to help the health of us in several years to come I think this could well it'll potentially save a lot of money for healthcare. so definitely worth it to check out and a lot of companies and organizations are supporting this act such as the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Canada and the Canadian Athletic Therapists Association Go therapists, so um, please help support this. Yeah, well, it makes sense too, since like we're telling our kids, well, with the children fitness tax credit, we're telling our kids to be more active. But what about all the adults that are trying to get active as well? That's it, and it's going to really help push people too to be more active. Yeah. Okay, good. And uh, speaking of pushing people to be more active, uh, I came across another. Uh, social networking uh, exercise type of uh, website uh, similar to the ones that we talked about in the past like Peer Trainer and Trainio mm -hmm. uh, except this one's called Jiminy. Okay? Nice. Uh, what I like about this one is that it's it's uh, it's really simple to use uh, I mean the layout is uh, really uh, easy to access uh, buttons aren't all over the place I mean just press one thing and you go to it right away uh, you can search for new workouts which is pretty cool you can have a uh, nutritional info you can join groups you can participate in challenges uh, with people that live in your area okay, okay. Ooh. and uh, you can also find gym buddies, okay, to help nice. uh, keep you motivated, okay. Uh, so when you go into this website, you have an area called My Locker Room, and that's basically where you track all the variety of uh, fitness goals that you have. You can uh, track your weight, your body fat percentage, you can uh, keep track of your resting heart rate, uh, the size of your measurements, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you can also uh, uh, map and uh, chart your, uh, your, your, your progress as well. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So check it out. Check it out. All right. And one last thing. For all of you who are big fans of exercise DVDs, um, here's something uh, that we came across. Um, exercise podcast. I, we've talked about it before, but this is something that maybe be a little bit more relevant now. Exercise DVDs. You're not really quite sure if, you've, you, if you're going to like it. They do cost money. So here's an alternative. Exercise podcasts, for the most part, are free. Yeah, most of them And are free. Uh, you can you know, download an episode, see if you like it or not, and then continue to do that. Yeah. So it works pretty much the same way, um, except for now you can download it and they pretty... You can watch it anywhere. Yeah. If you have an iPod, have a computer, I mean, you can always download it onto some sort of video, uh, video playing device. Yeah, and, uh, that's you can, right. Uh, do your workout on that. Uh, yeah. Yoga Today was one that we talked about in the past. And there's a Yoga Amazing, there's one for jogging. There's probably several out there if you just do a little bit of a search. So yeah. it's worthwhile to check it out in our uh, economy these days. Free is good. Free is good. All right. So that's it for Fit News this week. On this week's Fit Tip, I decided to talk a little bit more about uh, what the healthy ranges of body fat in men and women. Uh, since in the previous episode, I briefly covered uh, the different types of methods that you can use to measure body fat percentage. Now, before I actually get into the numbers, uh, I have to remind everybody that 
Body fat is important for the body. Okay, uh, we need fat to insulate and protect our organs. Uh, it's also uh, a way to keep our bodies warm. And we also need body fat to help uh, absorb fat-soluble vitamins that the body needs. Now, what are the healthy ranges? If you're a woman, okay, uh, ideally we'd like you to be between 18 and 23 okay? percent. 18, 18 to 23 percent is what we call the optimal range. Uh, if you fall within between 23 to 29 percent, that's what we consider as moderate. Uh, if you're 29 to, 20, uh, to 33 percent, that's considered high. And if you're greater than 33 percent, that's considered very high. Okay? If you're a man, if you're, if you're a male, okay, if you're between 13 and 18 percent, that's what we consider as optimal. Okay? If you fall between uh, 18 to 23 percent, it's within moderate. If you're between 23 to 28 percent, it's considered high. And if you're greater than 28 percent, it's considered very high. Now, you, you will have noticed that there is a difference between body fat percentages for men and women. Uh, the reason why women are greater, has greater body fat uh, than males, is because uh, there's a difference in hormones. But uh, in saying that, uh, when, you're, when, you're when you're within the very high range, uh, you have to remember that uh, there is a greater risk of, uh, of, uh, of disease and uh, obesity. Uh, and also, you don't want to be too low as well. Uh, when I say too low, uh, for males, you don't want to be uh, lower than 4 to 5%. And for women, you don't want to be lower than uh, 10 to 11%. Uh, if you're an athlete, you will notice that you do fall within the range of, uh, if you're a male, between 5 and 10 percent and if you're a woman between 11 to 18 percent. Now that's not considered as bad, it's not considered low, it's just that for an athlete they tend to have greater uh, fat-free mass or muscle mass uh, because within their sport they require more muscle than body fat. Um, it's really important that we always maintain uh, that difference. Okay? Fat-free mass, which includes all your bones, your organs, and your muscles, should always be greater than your body fat. Uh, it should always be at least uh, 4 to 5% greater. So if you're a male and you have a body fat percentage of 14%, then your fat-free mass should be around, let's say, 20%. Okay? If you're a woman and your uh, body fat percentage is around 19 then you should be about 24% of your, uh, of, of, uh, you should have 24% of fat-free mass. Uh, the rest of your body is composed mostly of water, which is also important for the body, okay? Um, so, I uh, hope this guideline helps you a little bit more in keeping track of uh, what should be your uh, healthy body composition should be. And uh, that wraps up this week's uh, Fit Tip, and we'll see you next time. So on this week's information, I decided to talk a little bit about something I never gave much thought to before, and I'm not sure if you have either. It's the ever understated spiced paprika. So where did it come from? It originally came from South America, and it's made up of dry, uh, dried ground up chili peppers. So eventually it made its way across the ocean, and now Spain and Hungary are the major producers of paprika, but now no longer using the uh, chili pepper. Usually now it's a milder uh, sweet pepper that's used of the family capsicum anum. So it's all the uh, bell pepper family. So uh, the flavors range from slightly sweet to spicy depending on the type of pepper it's used and also the climates that it's, uh, the pepper is grown in. So depending on the weather, the, the conditions of where it's grown, this will all affect the flavor. And sometimes if they use a different type of uh, curing process for the, the pepper, if they use a smoky flavor, the, the paprika itself is also going to come out uh, with a little bit of a special flavor. So. It's usually used for kind of garnishes, you kind of shake it off for some color, but normally it has a really kind of rich, earthy flavor to it and can be used for marinades um, and will add something, a whole new dimension of flavor to. So, also we can use it for um, salad dressings and paprika actually acts as an emulsifier, so it binds the oil and vinegar together so the vinaigrette actually holds. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, so. I hope that everyone's going to go out and try paprika now in a whole new different light and appreciate its uh, rich and earthy flavors. So that'll be it for this week's information. So this wraps up this week's episode of KinFit. You can throw away your Jane Fonda VHSs and have some goldfish crackers. Goldfish crackers? Yeah, they're good. Okay. Anyways, um, please check back our show notes for all those important pieces of information we want you to find out about. And if you have any ideas, suggestions, or questions you want to ask us, just email them to us at info at kinfit.tv. And a big thank you goes out to Vincent, our cameraman today. So remember, don't quit. Stay fit. And it was made from dried chili powder, uh, chil dried chili peppers. Sorry, dried chili powder. Ah, cut it. Oh, it was awful. <laughs>